This video is going to be a quick tutorial on 555 timer as an oscillator. This mode of operation is referred to as S-table mode. Beside this mode, the 555 timer can be used in monostable and bistable modes as well and I will cover these in my next tutorial. I'll be using a TLC555 but any kind of variation can be used including NE555 and LM555. Let's build the S-table circuit on a small breadboard. Simply by following the schematic it took me around 4 minutes to assemble it. For the values of R1 and R2 I went with 1K and 100K while the capacitor is 1 microfarad. The 10 nanofarad cap on pin 5 is not necessary for this circuit to work but it is recommended to ground the pin 5 through it just to improve the overall stability of the timer. I'll power the circuit with a little less than 5 volts, just enough to get it running but not too much to burn the LED. If I swap this 1 microfarad cap and replace it with a 4.7 microfarad one for example, the frequency decreases to around 1.5 Hz. You can also change the frequency by varying the resistance of R1 and R2. Potentiometers are sometimes placed instead of fixed resistors if it is necessary to have the ability to adjust the frequency. You can generate square wave signals with TLC555 up to 2 MHz. Simply use capacitor in nanofarad or picofarad range in order to get higher frequencies. For example, if I use a 10 nanofarad cap and connect a speaker to the output pin 3, I can hear a tone of around 700 Hz. The 555 timer itself can power small loads such as single LED or low power speaker without a problem, but if you want to control some heavier loads such as an incandescent light bulbs, you will have to use a relay, for example, to turn it on and off. 555 timers are very often used, especially in S-table modes. They are very cheap, easy to use and variants like TLC555 consume very little current yet goes up to 2 MHz. As I mentioned earlier, in my next video I'll be talking about 555 configured as monostable and bistable multivibrators. Thanks for watching.